it's so good that you chose to join me on the patio to repot my Paphiopetalum Iona together with me. This orchid has never been repotted since she arrived in my collection because I grow her in inorganic media, specifically lecker and self-watering. What I'm doing is just dusting off the leaves before we get into the repot with my ever so soft makeup brush. It's the easiest way I can get dust off, especially if the Paphiopetalum leaves are fuzzy. While these leaves aren't that fuzzy, they do have a little bit of texture to them. So this is a primary hybrid, and luckily she fares very well in my cooler winters indoors because she is temperature tolerant, seeing as one of her parents is the Ferrianum, and Ferrianum is a cool to cold grower. The other parent, the pod parent, being Bilatulum, also known as the egg nest orchid. And with all that being said, why haven't I repotted her before? As mentioned, in organic media, I don't have to. Slipper orchids also don't have a special time when they need to be repotted, where you see, for example, you have to wait for new root growth. All these things make life very, very easy growing slipper orchids in inorganic media. And the only reason I'm repotting her now is because the pot is broken. Yes. So this wasn't a candidate for my sterilization with bleach and everything. This actually is now a pot that has <laughs> reached very old age. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother. She would be absolutely fine in this pot for the longest time. Now you saw me pouring water into the pot, and that is all it is, is plain RO water. I very rarely fertilize my slipper orchids because I have been a little bit heavy handed and they don't really need that much. So I opt now to either fertilize at 50 parts per million or not at all. She still is a regular bloomer. Having said that though, she has had three blooms, then two blooms. So maybe with a little bit of a repot, a tickling around the roots, she will get aggravated and then give us three blooms again because all the fans that should be blooming, I hope that they all will. I'm expecting good things in this pot because the water level as I poured it in, it didn't recede very much. And to me, that signals there's roots in the pot. The question is, are they good, healthy and alive? And um, I would say yes from what I can gauge by the gentle squeeze, the pot is rock hard. <laughs> That's always a good sign. So we have to be careful with all the very delicate leaf joints. Be mindful not to get too much water in them. That's why I'm doing this repot early in the day so that she can stay outside and dry off before the evening comes. Dry off meaning the leaf joints dry off. I have one microfiber. And what I'm watching here now, because I haven't, as mentioned, repotted this orchid for all the years that I've had her, and that was since 2019. This mixture of Lekka, we are not going to be repeating it. It is all mixed together. That's what I used to do back in the day. Just take out of the bag what came and throw it into the pot and let's grow. What I'm doing now though, is separating my Lekka out to large and small Lekka. And we are going to repot this orchid into small lecker because slipper orchids just love their water. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> ah, behold, what do you say? Anybody got any questions? Leave them in the comments because... <laughs> um, yes. Lekka self-watering or any kind of semi-hydroponic setup with their classical drainage holes as well. I think uh, the root system speaks for itself. <laughs> I'm very pleased to report that this system is working and you know why it's working so well with slipper orchids? Because this whole semi-hydroponic setup with Lekka back in the day was invented for specifically houseplants make your life easier, make it less messy. And houseplants are terrestrials. Slipper orchids are terrestrials, semi-terrestrials, depending on which side of the fence you're sitting on. And well, the two go very well together, as you can see, if you had any doubts and were wondering if you would like to try it with yours. My intention is not to mess with the root ball too much. Just want to see if I can get some of the little older flower spikes that remain from older fans that have long left the building, the patio. Whatever I can pick out down here, 
eh, it's just a thing that makes me feel a little bit better. It doesn't really need it because I don't see any pests. So we got an old fan dying off here, but it's still nice and green. It still provides for the orchid. And we're not going to mess with that. I'm just wondering if I dare tickle out this microfiber. <laughs> it's coming out nice and easy, thank goodness. The fuzzy roots did not attach to it that much. There you go. She lives in my conditions in bright shade. During the winter though, her shade gets a little bit darker because other orchids that have a really high light requirement, they get priority. She has never failed to bloom for me. It's just her bloom count has dropped and that could be because I never repotted her. And we'll see what happens now. Still, what I wanted to do was, I was thinking of putting her into the same size pot, but based on the size of the root system, I'm gonna bump her up a size. So she's going from a 15 centimeter pot into an 18 centimeter pot. Here's my Lekka comparison. You can see how everything was mixed before. And this is then the after. This is only small Lekka. But first, as per, what I always do is add water into that pot. You wouldn't think it would need it that much because we have such a beautiful root ball, but there are gaps in between the root ball now and I want the lecker to slide in very, very simply, easily, without any issues. Cover all the gaps and spaces and air pockets. And another thing I'm going to do for this orchid is I'm going to give her a support, which I never did in the four years that I've had her. <laughs> but this orchid has such beautiful blooms. They're a bit large for the flower stem. They actually would be too droopy and I've always had difficulty presenting them beautifully. What I'm trying to do now is get the support to thread so that it comes out in the middle. I may have to be a teeny tiny bit more forceful than I would like. Here it comes. There we go. I could have had the support at the edge as well, but uh -uh, I want it in the middle because this way I don't need that much wire when it comes to presenting the blooms when and if she blooms for us. All right, tight squeeze. Now we've got Lekka at the base. Make sure that she doesn't get up too high. You see, there's one thing about slipper orchids. As they grow more and more roots, they start to grow out of their pots. And ideally, I don't want to be doing this again in two years. So I always like to have my slipper orchids lower in the pot. And then as the root system starts to do its thing and push the orchid up, it buys me more time so that a repot is not necessary simply because the orchid is growing up and over. So I'm pushing the root ball, everything down as I jiggle. Otherwise, she's got a mind of her own. <laughs> Don't all orchids have a mind of their own? Question. <laughs> oh, speaking of comments, I was gonna ask you, what do you think? Do orchids have a mind of their own? But speaking of comments, let me know what you think, but would you also give this video a like? That would be so appreciated. And welcome to the channel if this is the first video you've ever seen. Maybe you've already watched some videos but haven't subscribed yet. I would appreciate your vote of confidence and please subscribe to the channel. You will know if you have not subscribed to the channel because YouTube has done a little fancy thing. When I say subscribe, look at the button. If it lights up and does some little sparkly bits and pieces, a little bit of a flare or something comes out of that button of the subscribe, it kind of highlights when I say subscribe. That's why I'm saying it so much because I wanted to see if that works. Also, let me know if that works for you in the comments. Just want to give you a better vantage point because what I'm trying to do now is have some obnoxious little stubborn roots here that want to be aerial up at the surface. I don't like that. They weren't there before. And I also want to fill the lecker around the base, not halfway up the base, but in such a manner that any new roots that are going to grow out will find the media as opposed to stalling. So that's, this is the only what I would say, if there's a tricky part when it comes to repotting slipper orchids, it's getting the media level right, you see? You don't want the roots to be exposed like that, but if you get too high above the fan, 
then the water will actually get into those crevices. And that applies for any media that can go for your, if you go your classic route with organic media, whatever your mix is, ah, there's always a bit of the risk of the water being too high and too much in the business of the fan here. So this is something that you would like to, that you will have to sort of gauge for yourself. I have a very dry climate. Usually my top layer is on the drier side of things. If you're in a very humid environment, I would say this is also ideal. In my dry climate, I can probably get away with a little bit more height on that fan. And it's one of the newer fans that hasn't bloomed. It's got a root system, so we're kind of safe here. So if you're very humid, make sure that you give enough airflow around the base of your fans. And if you're in a dry climate like mine, then you can be a little bit more, let's say, aggressive and load up. Now, I did want her lower in the pot, but you can see what has happened. And I'm sorry about the crooked picture. Oh, dearie me. But you can see what has happened. Even while I was pushing her down, she has risen herself to the level that I would prefer to have her a little bit lower at. Maybe two fingers lower in the pot than this would be ideal, but I'm not going to take her out and do it all over again. In your case, I would always, like I mentioned, I would always recommend to get the orchid into the pot as low as possible and let her grow up and over. You can always fill with media if she gets higher in the pot. That is always an option, but you see, I have exceeded that limit. So we'll see how she does. She may need another repot and this time not in four years. Instead, it may happen in two. We will just wait and see. Now that's pretty much my repot done. With the exception, I'm going to drain the pot I'm going to fill my reservoir to full because again, water loving. There we go. And with the rest of the water, I'm just gonna rinse out the pot itself from inside out because you know, slipper orchids just love oxygen around their roots and water has a lot of that in it. And then gravity pulls more oxygen through the pot and uh, this slipper orchid is just gonna be living la vida and hopefully reward us with blooms. <laughs> okay, thank you once again for being here. I hope you enjoyed a little repot sesh with me on the patio in Southern Spain. Wonderful to have had you here. I wish you a fabulous day on the condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care, bye.